Hey everybody, uh, Alex McCarthy coming from you, not from Assembly Hall. Uh, I'm home in Michigan for the holidays. Um, this is obviously not John Bauer find next to me, this is a snowman decoration. Uh, but still talking about Indiana uh, 79 and uh, New Orleans 59. Uh, it was basically kind of the game we expected. Uh, uh, New Orleans stuck with Indiana for a long time through the first you know, 10, uh, 15 minutes. Uh, but after the 6.05 mark in the first half, they didn't score uh, until early in the second half. Indiana ended the ended the first half on an 18 to nothing run to take a 22 point lead, and then didn't really need to to do much in the second half to kind of just cruise to victory and and end this you know the non-conference cupcake kind of season. Uh, obviously, Indiana has Georgetown coming up here in a few days, uh, but this was the last game where, you know, you, you go into the game thinking, okay, Indiana's going to win by 20, 25, 30 points, um, and then you see them just kind of be a lot more talented than the other, than the other team. And that's, that's what it was tonight. It was just a matter of, it was a matter of time before Indiana was going to start pulling away and showing that it was um, a, a far superior team to a sub-500 uh, New Orleans squad. Um, but, you know, th there's still some, some obvious takeaways from tonight's game. Uh, Hunter Oscar Perea played as well as he's played. He, you know, the past few games he's been playing really, really well, and especially um, really in, in the shot blocking realm. He had um, he had four uh, obviously against Butler the other day, and then um, he added four more tonight, um, and looked and just looked really more aware, more up to speed on on defense, and and then showed some nice post moves on, on offense and. Um, Ended with 12 points, six rebounds, and those four blocks on four of six shooting. Um, so again, a, a fairly efficient offensive night. It seems like that's that's been what he's been doing. Really, when he's when he's at his best offensively, you know, he's not scoring. Uh, you know, he, he's not taking eight or ten shots. He's taking you know five or six or something like that. Because usually he makes a lot of his shots. He's he's a fairly high percentage guy at least so far. Just because he's um, he's he's playing with the knowledge that. If he doesn't have an open shot, then there's so many other guys on the team who can. There are more guys around him who are more natural scorers, I guess. You look at James James Blackman, Yogi. Really, a lot of the a lot of the guys on the court, natural shooters, natural scorers. Um, and speaking of James Blackman, after the roughest game of his career against Butler, where he shot two for twelve, um, he was better tonight. He still missed a couple shots where you know his, his three point shot looked a little bit off, and then. Um, he, he missed a couple at the rim, but he, was, he still shot six for 11. Uh, had 14 points, uh, trailing only Yogi Ferrell, who had who had 17 points on five of seven shooting, to follow up on his his huge performance against Butler uh, on Saturday. He was three for four from behind the arc, and that's where Indiana did a lot of its damage. You know, as as we've come to expect, basically, um, Indiana and 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 New Orleans were pretty even in the paint for the whole game. New Orleans actually ended up outscoring IU in the paint, 44 to 42, but New Orleans was one for 13 from behind the arc, i.e. seven for 21, which you know seven for 21 isn't exactly where Indiana wants to be, but it's it's still much better than one for 13. And then at the foul line, uh, New Orleans was was doing what it could to kind of slow the game down. They were holding onto the ball, um, kind of having long possessions, but they were also fouling Indiana fairly often. And I was able to get to the line 24 times, made 14 of those shots. But then New Orleans just all night looked. Like it had never shot a free throw before, basically uh, four for twelve from the line, which is just just atrocious. I mean, th those are free points during that eighteen to eighteen zero run at the end of the first half. Um, New Orleans had a, had a couple chances to to break up that scoring run and from the line, and then just was clanking field goal or free throws. So um, it, it's it was just another night of of Indiana welcoming a, a quite frankly a. a an inferior opponent to Assembly Hall, and then proving that that they're inferior. So uh, Indiana is going to head to to Madison Square Garden um, again with you know ten and two, with um, the, you know, the two ranked wins under their, under their belt, and really playing as well as they played. You know the last four games they played pretty well. I mean tonight you could ex you could expect a little bit of a lull after the big game Saturday. Uh, and then when you're up by 22 at halftime, you know the second half wasn't too exciting or too interesting or too impressive for Indiana. Uh, New Orleans actually outscored them by two in the second half, but it, it really, you know, it, it was a half that 
Indiana just wanted to to kind of you, you could tell it just wanted to cruise to victory to get it over with, move on to Georgetown, um, and they did that. They took care of business fairly easily tonight, um, and just it was again it was a game that Indiana did what it needed to do. Meanwhile, you know up the road in West Lafayette, Purdue couldn't you know do what it needed to do and, and lost to Gardner Webb at home, which you know add that to the list of really disappointing losses from Big Ten teams, especially at home, um, to teams that you don't expect them to lose to. Uh, but that's that's really about it um, in terms of, of takeaways on this end. Um, Indiana, like I said, playing pretty well, pretty confidently, especially going into that game. It's a Saturday noon game um, against Georgetown at Madison Square Garden where, um, where Indiana played fairly well but, but lost to a far, far more talented, uh, superior Louisville team. Um, you know, earlier, earlier this month, so uh, should be an interesting matchup, a nice kind of barometer again of where Indiana is before Big Ten play starts New Year's Eve in Lincoln. So uh, uh, for the snowman decoration, um, and I'm Alex McCarthy from Inside Indiana. You guys have a great holiday, and uh, thanks for watching all year long. Obviously, we'll have a couple more of these. John's actually going to be, John Bauer fight is going to be at the Garden um, on Saturday, so that's going to be awesome. He'll have full coverage from there, and uh, yeah, keep keep watching, keep reading, and uh, thanks so much for, for all that you guys have given us this year. Uh, it's been a fun uh, community to, to be a part of, certainly, and uh, it's, it's, it's been a, an eventful year, certainly, uh, on the basketball and football front. So, again, Indiana winning easily against New Orleans tonight, 79-59, and uh, with that, you guys have a great holiday, and we'll see you soon.